welcome to Mad Men Men. Now, usually this is the weekly show where we talk about a show that used to come out weekly, but we're doing something a little bit different here. This is called Tales from the Drink Cart. Now, first of all, I'm John Agroni, your usual guy. And as I just mentioned, we talk about Mad Men on this show. We've been going through the first season, but we're doing something a little different because... As it happens, I'm going on my honeymoon this month. Oh my gosh. And so we do record several episodes ahead. However, just due to time constraints and wanting to stay on schedule, we are kind of mixing it up with a special episode here. This is a bonus and it's related to something we talked about on the show during 5G, that conversation we had a couple of weeks ago. And I had made the comment that 5G, which follows the story of... Don Draper, of course, having a reunion with his brother Adam and being very resistant to this, what would otherwise be touching meeting of the brothers. Uh, During this conversation of that episode, I, I made the remark that I was like, you know, this feels like such a solid short story, particularly in an episode where we actually find out that Ken Cosgrove is a writer. He writes and he wrote a short story that got published in The Atlantic and In this episode, we kind of get a short story between Don and Adam, and it's a really interesting thing while you're watching the episode. And so we did a little bit of an experiment, and I took the the scenes that just have Dick and Adam and put them together to sort of show what I mean. So this is kind of displaying, if you did read a short story or listen to a short story, this is essentially what that would be like. This is a very experimental thing. I don't think I've ever heard of any podcast do something like this where they're just kind of like stitching together an edit, especially since it's only audio. So I don't know if this is gonna be good, but I hope it is. And I hope you get something out of it. And of course, we'll be back to our normal type of episode here in a minute. I I will be in Europe. I'm going to be out of here. I'm on my honeymoon. I'm on a good time, but super excited to get back to the Mad Men Men stuff with you all once I do return. For now, here is Tales from the Drink Cart, Dick and Adam. Do you mind? It's like any excuse to get out of this building. <laughs> His name is Adam Whitman. Uh, tell him, uh, where is he? Reception. I should, uh, have to deal with this. Sure, sure. You better come back now. I got this. Okay. Can I help you? Can I help you? It's you. It's really you. Dick. I can't believe it. I don't know what you're talking about. I know, I'm grown up, but Dick, it's me. It's Adam. Your little brother. It's Don. It says Donald Draper, but I knew it was you. Are you upset? Are you mad at me? I don't even know who you are. I I know I look different. I grew up tall, okay? But it's me, Dick. Look, I'm a janitor at American Calculator in the Empire State Building, and I found this in someone's trash. I thought I saw a ghost. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. You can't even look at me. Okay, you're at work. I can come back another time. No. There's a coffee shop, three blocks west of here. Delight. I'll meet you there at noon. That's swell.
can't believe this. It is really you. What do you want from me? I don't understand this. You have nothing to say to me? Nothing to ask me? Dick, I thought you were dead, and you're right here. That's not me. Can't you even say my name? Adam. That's not me. It is. What happened to you? Why did you do that? Why did you leave me? I couldn't go back there. I knew you weren't dead. I knew I saw you that day, hiding in the window in your uniform. I was only eight, but I knew it was you. It was a long time ago. I can't believe when I saw that picture in the paper, I thought it looks exactly like him, except around the eyes. Donald Draper? <laughs> what kind of name is that? What difference does it make? People change their names. I guess. happened to her. Mom? She was my mother. She never let me forget that. She's gone. The stomach cancer. Good. Uncle Mac took it pretty hard. He passed too. Are you sure you don't want anything? I know, I got this lump in my throat. I'd love to eat right now, but I can't. Did you miss me at all? Of course I did. This isn't how I imagined it. I'm sorry. You keep saying you're sorry. Where were you all this time? around here mostly I'm not mad at you I just want to know I mean look at you who is Donald Draper I mean do you have a wife kids I'm gonna go that's it Want me to pay for lunch? No. Let me. You didn't have anything. I don't understand why you're being like this. When I was little, I used to imagine this day happening, and here it is. I don't understand. I'm family. I just want to be a part of your life. Adam, that's not going to happen. I'm going to walk out that door. That's it. I'm not buying your lunch. Because this never happened. to see you tonight. Are you busy? For you? Of course not. Good. I'm leaving now. From where? 25 minutes. I don't even know what you drink. Whatever you have. I'm so glad you changed your mind. Come in. Sit down. I know it's terrible. It's temporary. I, I hope. Look at you. 
You look more like you now. I came here because I wanted to talk to you and explain something to you. Yeah, you gotta stop that kind of talk. This isn't so hard. Adam, listen to me. I have a life, and it only goes in one direction, forward. What are you drinking? Gin? I found it in one of the offices, under a couch. Three quarts. Figured I could take one. Coffee. I can do that. So no Abigail, no Uncle Mac. Nobody, huh? I know. It's strange. Your office is really nice. Figure from that award, you must be pretty important. I don't know, I guess so. Well, everyone always said you were too smart for your own good. Of course, Uncle Mac thought you were soft. But you're not, are you? No, I'm not. What are you doing? It's $5,000. That's all there is. I want you to take it, and I want you to leave New York, and I don't want to see or hear from you ever again. That's not what I wanted. That's not right. That's all I can do for you. You're serious, aren't you? You thought I was dead. Let's go back to thinking that. Where do I go? Adam, that is five thousand dollars. Take your own life. I have too much here. Thank you so much for listening to our edit of this episode. Again, if you missed it, this is episode five of Mad Men season one, titled 5G. And all the show notes, of course, have the credits to everything we just played for you there. This was edited, of course, from the original episode and kind of transformed in the fashion that it is right now. I hope this was interesting and I hope that it was a bit illuminating in terms of how the writing of Mad Men works when you really put everything together because what you didn't hear there were all of the different asides that kind of happen and dispersed throughout the episode. To be clear, Mad Men is the kind of show where it is the sum of its parts. Everything does go together And everything works together to be a single great episode of television. However, that doesn't mean that when you isolate these moments and kind of put them together that you can't reveal something a little new. Kind of catch the small ticks, the small differences in volume in which John Hamm delivers the performance here. And how Adam's character, of course, grows over time. I also think it's interesting just to listen to these moments because... When we don't have all the visual cues and when we don't have all of the amazing atmosphere that the cinematographer and the production designers and everybody else is pulling off, you're kind of just left with 
the words. You're left with the sensory feeling. And it really is a different kind of way to experience this dialogue and this storytelling that I hope you found useful because I don't think there's anything else like it out there right now, at least that I'm aware of. So there you go. I don't know if we'll do something like this again. It would really have to warrant um, us kind of doing, uh, taking the time to kind of put something like this together. But if you do like it, let us know and we'll be sure to make a note of it. Thank you, as always. We'll be back for the next episode. I believe we're going to be talking about episode seven coming up pretty soon. And uh, yeah, I think it should be a good time. Can't wait.